in light of the fact that we have just dedicated a choir director stand, I'd like to ask you to think for a moment what life would be like without music. I mean, think about it. There would be no song that is humming through your head all day after church. There'd be no CDs, no bands, no concerts, no MTV. Well, okay, I could do without that. But there'd be no iTunes, no streaming music. Radio would be boring and limited only to stations that broadcast the news or weather or road conditions. A bell, the bells that our bell choir uses, would only be used to get somebody's attention, maybe to announce that dinner's ready, but otherwise it really would serve no other purpose. Brides would march down the aisle in silence. The beautiful voices of our choir would be spoken at best. Now, can you imagine worship without music? You know, I guess we'd still read the scripture readings. We would still pray. The preacher would still preach. You never get away from that. And the benedictions would be spoken at best. But without music, it just wouldn't be the same. See, music tremendously enriches our worship. It enriches our lives. God created us in his image. And that means, among other things, that he has created, created us with the ability to create as well. Composing and leading music and singing a song are truly expressions of the creative ability that God has blessed us with. The music is a very important part of our lives because it can express every human situation. I mean, think about it. It can express great joy and celebration. It can express national pride, like when we sing our national anthem. Military songs. Music can be an expression of love. Music can provide comfort in times of sorrow or encouragement in times of distress. If you enjoy musical parades, and you probably enjoy a good musical march or two, there are children's songs. There are humorous songs. Your spirit can soar with the sounds of great symphonies, or you can pour out your soul in singing the blues. Styles vary, but the appreciation of music is universal. See, music is God's own invention and one of the greatest gifts that our Heavenly Father has blessed us with. And God, being a fan of diversity, gave us the ability to enjoy music in a variety of forms, I mean, produced by various instruments, from philharmonic orchestras to bluegrass fiddlers, from a harp to the bagpipe. God loves it all. Now, I know the pride that parents feel when their child learns to play a musical instrument and does it well, whether they play solo or in a band. Now, I know there are some here today who love traditional organ-led worship, and they're not too thrilled about band-led contemporary worship. And completely 180 degrees around, I know some here today who love contemporary band-led worship, but aren't cr crazy about traditional organ-led worship. But did you notice the common denominator? It's music. It's worship. See, God loves both forms of worship equally. Why? Because we worship him. And in doing so, we glorify him. It's just like the wonderful practical advice that the Apostle Paul gives to us in Philippians 4.8. Paul writes, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Or maybe, Listen to such things. 
sing about such things. And the God of peace will be with you. In other words, let's not fill our minds and our voices with junk, but with lovely, admirable, excellent things that reward us with a healthy mind and, and a healthy faith, a healthy attitude that brings us closer to our Heavenly Father. Nowhere are such qualities more evident than in worship. Music in worship creates an atmosphere that celebrates the presence of God the Holy Spirit, and it rewards us with peace, and it uplifts us, inviting us to experience God firsthand. See, going through the pages of the Bible, we can see an immediate indication that God loves music and has raised up people who... Uh, illustrate God's beauty and power and majesty through music. Think about the music that Moses and Deborah celebrated through God's mighty acts of deliverance. And maybe the best known composer of, and singer of all in our Bible was David, a shepherd boy who became a king. The book of Psalms is a collection of songs used in worship. And most of them were written by David. There are psalms to fit every situation in a person's life. There are psalms of praise, psalms of thanksgiving, even psalms used at the coronation of kings. There are psalms of lament, individual or national lament. There are psalms of teaching wisdom, psalms of encouragement, Psalms that witness God's glory. And I think perhaps one of the most beautiful psalms ever written was the 95th Psalm. It's known as the Venite, a psalm used in Matins, which is morning, a morning liturgical worship. It calls out to us, Come, let us make a joyful sound unto the Lord, joyful sound to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful sound to him with songs of praise. Even in the church year, each season has its own beautiful and appropriate music, doesn't it? How appropriate for us to celebrate Christmas with the sounds of great music. The account of Jesus' birth, as we read about it in the Gospel of Luke, is filled with songs. I mean, first, there is the song of Mary that she shares with her cousin Elizabeth. That's known as the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And then Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, when he was able to speak again, his prophecy was conveyed also in a song. And then, of course, who can forget that heavenly choir of angels in the hills surrounding Bethlehem there and, and praising God with a song? Do you remember what they sang? Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. It's not just at Christmas, though. Look at Easter, such beautiful Easter hymns, such as Jesus Christ is risen today. See, music has the power to touch our hearts. Music has the power to remove hostility, to make us aware of something far greater than ourselves, to lift our spirit, to bring us together and bring us closer to God's glorious presence. Today, as we begin the fall choir season, as we just dedicated this beautiful new choir director's stand, we stop for a moment and remember each person who has brought the wonderful, beautiful gift of music, be it musical instruments or through their voices here at Greenhaven Lutheran Church over the years. We thank God for the gift that he gave to them, which they in then turn gave to us and shared with us with their musical and their vocal talents. Praise be to God, our Heavenly Father, for the precious gift of life, for the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And praise be to God for the gift of music 
that inspires us to celebrate his infinite goodness in Jesus name amen we pray father we do thank you for the gift of music that gift which you have shared with so many in our congregation as they've shared it with us, encouraging us to lift up our voices, no matter what they sound like, because as we sing and praise you, you hear the beauty of that gift reflected back. So Lord, we thank you for that gift. Lord, we, we pray uh, for a wonderful choir season this year. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us now as we, in turn, prepare to receive your body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. And we pray now in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Now may the true faith which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.